Hey guys, Frox here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is NHL 95 for the Mega Drive. Um, don't worry, it's not going to be NHL 95 much longer. <laughs> uh, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm going to convert this game into a different one. Um, let me explain why. It's my friend's birthday coming up soon. And he's a big Mega Man fan. And I was around his house the other day playing on his Mega Drive, we were playing Streets of Rage and he dropped a massive hint that he wants uh, Mega Man while he was you know, he, he slipped it in there, we was playing it and he was like oh do you know what I'd like, I'd like one of them Mega Man while he was cartridges <laughs> so yeah, this is what I'm going to do in this video guys, I'm going to take this NHL 95 game and I'm going to convert it into Mega Man while he was but before I do that, I've got a very important message Warning. The following steps are for educational purposes only. Using these techniques to make reproduction cartridges to sell for profit is illegal. You will be breaking copyright law if you do so and you may face prosecution from the rightful copyright owner if caught. Therefore, I take no responsibility for any actions or prosecution you face if you decide to be an idiot and break the law in this way, you have been warned. Please don't buy reproduction cartridges and fund the lives of the people who sell them online, at auction sites or at video game conventions. It is, and has always been illegal to sell these types of reproduction cartridges, doing so is detrimental to genuine game cartridge sellers, traders and collectors in the retro video game community. Thank you. Okay, you may be wondering why I'm using NHL 95 as my donor cart. Uh, two reasons. Uh, the first reason it's NHL 95 and no one is going to miss it. Um, the second reason is this cartridge has the ability to save the game because it has an SRAM with a battery backup. So you can save your game on this. Now, the same is with the Mega Man Wily Wars cartridge as well. Um, that has the ability to save your game. So if you're going to do this, you're going to need a donor cartridge that you can actually save to. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to whip the lid off this and show you the PCB and I'll explain a little bit about the saving this and the saving Mega Man Wily Wars. Okay, as you can see I have the lid off the NHL Yawn Fest 95 game. Uh, it's just a couple of game bit screws. So uh, let me explain why there's a difference between the Mega Man Wily Wars ROM and this NHL 95 ROM and the way it saves. Now if we look at this ROM cartridge what we can see is a mask ROM so this is this contains our ROM image. Just above that is an SRAM uh, when we save our game on this game uh, this is where it gets saved and to the right is a battery backup so when we take the cartridge out this backs up this so we never lose our save. Now the problem with Mega Man Wily Wars is that game saves to an e EEPROM so if I was to just come along and, and you know whip this out pop in a Mega Man Wily Wars EEPROM um, when we came to save that game it wouldn't be able to save because it's trying to save to an e EEPROM but what some clever spark out there has done is they've hacked the Mega Man Wily Wars ROM so instead of saving to e EEPROM now it saves to an SRAM and that gives us the ability to use donor carts like this. Okay, I'm ready to remove the mask from. Um, but before I do that, important tip whenever you're working on battery backed up systems like this, especially this SRAM, the first thing you do before you do anything is you remove the battery. Now, the reason you do that is because if you make a mistake, you slip, you short the wrong pin, you've got a good chance of killing the SRAM. So, that's what you do, you remove that battery first, then you do all your work, and the last thing you do is put the battery back. So I'm gonna get this mask ROM off, but first I'm gonna get this battery off. I'm gonna do that with this desoldering pump. Now I've already showed you me using that, so I'm not gonna go over a grind, I'm not gonna film it. And what I'll do is once I've finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, all the components are off I need to take off. The first thing I took off was the battery because like I said I don't want any mess ups with the SRAM and the second one I did was the mask ROM 
Now if I show you the back of the PCB, you can see they came off really really nice there. No lifted pads. So yeah, this is already for the Mega Man Wily War Z Prom. Okay, what I want to do now is just go over some of the most common EEPROMs you can use in Mega Drive repro carts. Now the reason we can use these EEPROMs is because Sega chose a very common pinout for their mask ROMs. Um, pretty much we can swap them straight out for uh, EEPROMs. Now straight off the bat, you can see this one's a 27C400. Uh, this EEPROM is actually a 27C4096. The only reason it's there is because I don't have any 400s. So I just want you to pretend it is a 400. Uh, it has the same number of pins and the same capacity wise. So uh, yeah, just pretend it's a 400. So if you have a, a Mega Drive cartridge with a 512 kilobyte mask ROM, you replace it with a 27C400. If we go up to the next size up, if we if you have a mask ROM that is one meg, you replace it with a 27C800. If you have a mask ROM that's 2 meg, you replace it with a 27C160. If you have a mask ROM that's 4 meg, you replace it with a 27C322. Now, if we look at the NHL95 mask ROM, it's 2 meg. And if we look at Mega Man Wily Wars, it's 2 meg. And that's the reason why I chose NHL95. The EEPROM we're going to be using is this one which is the 27C160 but before I can burn the Mega Man Wily Wars ROM image to this EEPROM there's a couple of things I need to take care of first and that's what's coming up next okay what I want to do now is prepare the ROM so we can burn it to an EEPROM now I can't tell you where to get the ROM from if I did that I could get into trouble but what I can do is show you the name of it and tell you the name of it. If we look at the ROM, it's called Mega Man The Wily Wars European F3 SRAM Save by Mozilla. So if you search for that ROM, you'll find it dead easy. So okay, what I want to do now is fix the ROMs checksum. Now, you don't have to do this, but it's just an extra step I like to do. Um, because the ROM is reporting a bad checksum and I'll show you that if I load the ROM and you can see this is the ROM's checksum and this is what it should be and as you can see it's incorrect so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along and fix it by running this little tool and that's it we've fixed the ROM checksum now what I want to do is I'm just going to rename the ROM to make it more easy for me to find it when I come to burn it with my EEPROM burner so I'm going to call this Mega Man Wily Wars and I'm going to call it a bin file and that's that yep now okay the final step I have to do is bike swap the ROM image before I can burn it to an EEPROM now the reason we have to do that is because Mega Drive ROMs when they're on the mask ROM they're actually byte swapped so what I'm going to do now is run a program to byte swap this ROM image now you can use a really decent X editor a good one off the top of my head would be X Workshop you can byte swap files with that um, but I'm going to use a tool made by a fellow YouTuber and an all round awesome guy um, if you like my channel, you're going to love this guy's channel. Uh, so go and visit it. I'll put a link in the description below. And I'll show you where it is right now. It's Gadget UK 164. Absolute 100% legend, guys. Like I said, if you love my channel, you're going to fall in love with this channel. So go and check it out. So what I'm going to do now is just open the file. And it's already done an output for me. I'm going to press go. And that's bite swapped the ROM for me. So I can get rid of this one. I don't need that one anymore. And I'm just going to rename this out to Mega Man Wily Wars. 
and I'm going to copy that now to my USB stick and we can go and burn this to the EEPROM okay what I'm going to do now is copy that ROM image to my USB boot stick that contains my burning software, my EEPROM burning software so I'm just going to copy that to my EMP20 folder that's the name of my EEPROM burner it's a Needham's EMP20 and that's it, I'm ready to go, ready to burn this ROM image to an EEPROM so okay I'm ready to program the EEPROM just thought I'd show you my EEPROM programmer before I start it's a 48 pin ZIF socket so it can do the higher capacity 16 bit EEPROMs I have the EEPROM and the USB stick with the Mega Man Wiley Wars ROM on it ready to go just below that you can see my TL866 EEPROM programmer and in this box is all the adapters and everything I need and just below that is my EEPROM eraser and the way you erase an EEPROM if you look at the EEPROM you can see a window and what you do is you shine UV light into that window and it erases it so you put your EEPROM in here you should have draw to power it on and I don't know whether you can see the UV light just coming out through there and that's how you erase an EEPROM so what I'm going to get doing now is set everything up get my camera on a tripod and we'll program this EEPROM but first I might as well just put the EEPROM actually in the EEPROM programmer ready to go so what I'll do now is start set off if we're not and we'll program the EEPROM so okay I'm ready to go I have my USB stick I'm going to put that in my USB slot on my main cabinet and I'm going to boot the USB stick so if I press F8 on my keyboard I should get a pop-up menu where I can select a boot for my USB stick and as you can see press F8 and I've just pressed it so I'm going to go down to USB that's my USB stick I'm going to select that now I created a boot menu um, as you can see it's got a, a number of options the first one is my EEPROM progress software because it's old DOS software but it works really well the second one is a ghost image so if I have anything wrong with my main cabinet I can just ghost an image straight back over to the hard drive the third one is if I put a new hard drive in it I'm going to need to partition it and obviously reboot and shut down the computer so I'm going to select the first one and it's just telling me make sure the EEPROM program is turned on before I continue so I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to press enter and this is my EMP burning software so there you go I mean <laughs> just a quick communication with the EEPROM programmer just to make sure the program can see the EEPROM program and it, and it did so the first thing I need to do is select what device it is so that's number five I need to tell it what EEPROM is actually in the EEPROM programmer so I need to go to SGS Thompson which is there which is number 42 I'm going to select that and it's an M27C 160 which is just the and I'm going to select that so now what that's done is it's told the programmer what EEPROM is in the EEPROM burner so what I need to do now is to run an erase test now I know this EEPROM is already erased but I do this anyway just to make sure there's no data on it I'm ready to go when I want to program it so I'm just going to go to number two verify devices are raised now this is going to take a couple of minutes so what I'll do is I'll just fast forward through this and as you can see EEPROM is fully erased so we can exit out of that now what I need to do now is load the ROM image the Mega Man ROM image so I'm going to press V and I'm going to press F1 and that brings up like a, an old DOS directory and as we can see it's down here it's called mmww.bin so I'm just going to go down and select that file 
and that's as you can see it's been loaded now what I need to do now is transfer that image into the buffer now the buffer is what gets transferred to the EEPROM so I need to load that into the buffer now and I do that by pressing 8 and it's just asking me do I want to load the old thing and I'm just going to say yes and it's loading the file into the buffer and there you go you can see successfully loaded into the buffer so now I'm ready to program the EEPROM so I'm going to go to number one program with selected algorithm and yeah we're just going to program the EEPROM now it's going to take a little bit of a while to do that guys so what I'll do is I'll just fast forward it like I did when I was checking if the EEPROM was array so I'm just going to go there now it's asking me do I want to do the old EEPROM I'm going to just going to hit enter and it's just going to start programming so now it's actually programming the EEPROM So okay now it's finished writing EEPROM what it's doing now is it's verifying EEPROM make sure what it it can read so I'm just going to let that go through and there you go device successfully programmed now what I like to do just to cover my backside guys is I like to do another verify I don't know why I do this it's already done it once but I always like to cover my backside so I go to number three and verify device equals buffer so you know the the, the file that's in the buffer is just gonna check it again just to make double sure it's just me being anal <laughs> so there we go device successfully verified so that's it we've programmed our EEPROM okay and we've programmed our EEPROM so I'll come along and take that out in the EEPROM programmer now some of you might be going why is my EEPROM programmer connected to my main cabinet um, it's very simple um, back in the day when I used to repair old arcade games the first thing you would do when you got them was dump the ROMs um, because you want to make sure you've got a solid foundation make sure they're okay before you start because if you've got like graphical glitches on screen and you you're thinking okay it's RAM right so you spent two hours looking at the RAM and then you go oh crap it's not the RAM it's the ROM you could have eliminated that straight away if you just dumped the ROM straight away so uh, yeah that's why my EEPROM burner is connected to my OK cabinet for ease of use basically so yeah anyway we've uh, program the ROM, let's go get it into the PCB and we'll see if we've got a Mega Man Wily Wars ok I'm ready to assemble this cartridge well, I have the Mega Man Wily Wars bike swapped uh, save hacked EEPROM that I burnt earlier what I've done is I've just put a bit of tape over the window that's to stop any stray UV light getting in there and destroying any of the bits I don't want that to happen otherwise I'll have a corrupt ROM uh, next to it is the battery I'm going to put that on last so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this EEPROM and you can see the, the notch on the silk screen and it is the notch on the EEPROM so it goes in this way like this I'm going to solder that in once I've soldered that in I'll put the battery back in its place and that's it we should have a Mega Man Wiley Wars cartridge so uh, then what I'll do is I'll pop it in the Mega Drive we'll give it a test and see if it works so okay we're all done EEPROM containing Mega Man Wily Wars ROM image is soldered in I've put the battery back on give you a glimpse of the back nice and neat so uh, yeah let's give it a quick test put it in the Mega Drive power on see what we get yep yeah, that's a good sign last time I checked NHL 95 weren't made by Capcom it's 
Yay, we got Mega Man Wily Wars. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now guys is get the outer shell back on and then I can wrap up this video. Okay, we're all back together. Now, the reason I'm leaving the label on there, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna set my friend up. Uh, I'm just gonna put the cartridge in and turn it on. Um, yeah, I wanna keep it like that um, because I wanna see my friend's face when he sees the NHL 95 cartridge. He's gonna be like, what the f is that? <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, it's no longer NHL 95. It's now Mega Man Wily Wars. So yeah, there you go guys. I hope you liked the video. Uh, please don't use these steps to make uh, illegal cartridges to sell. Um, that's not the dumb thing to do. But yeah, if you like the video guys, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Hey Jamie Morgan at Morgan Just Games. This one's for you bud, because I know it's your favourite game. Don't you wish you was here playing this right now? <laughs> Yeah, that one's for you, Jamie. Link to his channel in the description below. <laughs>